Well, can you run a household refrigerator on a portable power station? That's something I'm asked periodically, and we were asked that again by several people after a recent video we did talking about the Blue Eddy AC240 power station. New power station from Blue Eddy that has some pretty incredible features. Well, so can you do it? The short answer, yes, at least with a unit like this Blue Eddy AC240. During a recent video, I tested the AC240 by running a variety of higher draw appliances, including a large household refrigerator freezer combo unit. According to the manufacturer of that refrigerator, Samsung, this fridge draws as much as 3 amps, or about 360 watts. Now, that actually, in some ways, is less than I expected. It's a very large fridge with a lot of uh, extra features on it. So the highest reading we actually saw during our testing was actually about 100 watts, and that was fairly brief before it dropped. And that was after the compressor had gotten kicked on and there was a spike in power. It was only about 100 watts, then it dropped right down. So it depends. Oftentimes, uh, the answer to the question, can I run a fridge, or the question, how long can I run a fridge on a portable power station, is something like, it depends. This is probably frustrating for you if you're asking the question, but it's also often an honest answer. And the reason for this is that the amount of power a fridge will need, it will draw, burn up, consume over a period of time, any given period of time, one hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, depends on many factors or variables. And if it is this multitude of unknown factors that makes it difficult to answer a question like this without first conducting research to collect some data and have a better understanding of how much power the fridge actually uses because it can vary considerably on a number of factors including the overall efficiency of the fridge. Uh, power consumption of the fridge when it's running whether that may be measured in watts or amps you can convert to the other if you want but in the case of this fridge about 3 amps 360 watts uh, some are going to use a lot more some might use less uh, there's a lot of factors in there we like that we saw about 100 watts when we were running it. Duty cycle, that's a, a t technical term for how many minutes of every hour does an appliance run, or what percentage of the time, specifically, does an appliance run. So in a case of something like this, uh, we're wondering how many minutes out of every hour does it run, because if it's going to pull the equivalent of 360 watts per hour when it's running, or our measurement of 100 watts per hour when it's running, we know it's not going to run 24-7. So. The, the less time it runs, the, the lower that duty cycle, the less power it's actually going to use, regardless of what amount it uses when it is running. Okay, uh, another variable, the fridge insulation and door seals. Uh, the better the insulation seals, the lower the power consumption, uh, just like everything else with energy. The ambient temperature, the hotter the house, the more the fridge needs to run. So, if your power goes out in the middle of the summer, you're wanting to run your fridge on a power station, your air conditioning is probably out. You may not have fans going or anything. It may be hot in your house, depending where you're at. Uh, and in that case, the fridge is going to need to run a lot more often than it would if the power goes out in the winter and it's quite chilly inside. Also, the temperature settings of the fridge or freezer, the lower they are, the more the fridge has to work to maintain that temperature. So if you set your fridge at 40 and your freezer at 25 or something, it's going to run less than if you set your fridge at... 32 and your freezer is zero because uh, it's going to run more often to keep things that much colder than the outside uh, room temperature. How often you open the fridge and freezer doors? Uh, you know, we, we all remember when, we, when we'd open the fridge doors and stand there and look for snacks, and our parents told us there's not a TV in there or something. And uh, we, we've done it as it is the older probably said the same dry kids, shut the door, you're wasting energy. So the more often you open the fridge or the freezer door, the more off, the more power you're going to have to uh, consume trying to make it cold again. And how full or empty the fridge is at the time is another variable. All fridges have a sweet spot, and if you're crammed too full, air can't circulate. It's going to work harder. If it's pretty much empty, it's going to uh, have to run more often to make things cold. So all these variables affect how much power your fridge will use over a given period of time. How do you know how much power your fridge uses? <laughs> Million dollar question, right? The first option is to use a tool like a kilowatt meter. Uh, we'll link to one on Amazon if you want to check those out. I've never used one personally, uh, but they're pretty cool devices. That you plug them into the uh, electrical outlet and you plug your device into it and you can see how much power it's using and you can monitor it over a period of time. And that's a really great way to know. Other than that, another great way to know is if you have a portable power station already that has a decent uh, display on it, 
you can plug your fridge into it and see how much power it's using and try and watch it over an hour or a few hours and see what it's doing. A less accurate solution, uh, but if you don't have either of those available to you, the best you can do is look up the power rating on your fridge, uh, guess the duty cycle or how frequently it runs, and calculate its power usage from there. Unfortunately, this last approach is also the least reliable option. So, is it possible? Yes, it is possible to run your fridge on a house, your household fridge on a portable power station, but it depends. <laughs> All but the smallest power station should have an inverter large enough to run uh, and to power a modern household refrigerator. In the case of this one, it's pretty big. It's got a, a, an addition to the large fridge, large freezer, has an ice maker in it, it has an a, a auto defry, defrost feature which requires heating. So, if you don't run those things, it'll pull less power. Like, like we saw. But all but the smallest power stations will probably run a modern fridge. The catch becomes how much battery power do you have available and so how long is it going to last. So it is possible. Is it practical? Yes, but again it still depends. Is the inverter able to power the refrigerator? Almost certainly if it's a larger power station, um, but how much battery capacity the power station has is going to remain the big question. You're going to get further than with a smaller power station, but it may still be enough or may not be enough depending on how much power your fridge is using, the ambient temperature, all these things as well as how long you need to run it. So is the power out for an hour and you want to run a fridge for an hour, you're, that's pretty easy to do. If the power is out for 24 hours or 48 hours, that becomes a little more difficult. So uh, that, that's usually the sticking point, how much battery capacity do you have. Reports that I was able to find online about household, dual, duty, household fridge duty cycles uh, they're posted again online, seem to vary between 20 to 30 percent of the time the fridge is going to run up to 50 percent or so on the high end. And again, you remember all the variables we talked about that can affect this. Assuming a 50 percent duty cycle, which may be likely in warmer weather if it's really hot in the summer, the power is out, you have no air conditioning, it might be 90 degrees in your house. Uh, then in that example, our fridge is dry, if it's drawing 360 watts, may use 4,320 watts per day, accounting for inverter inefficiency because anytime you're convert using a inverter to convert power from DC power in a battery to AC power for uh, appliances like a refrigerator, you have an inefficiency and you lose some power in that conversion process. I believe Blue Eddy's around are around 8 or 9% is their rated capacity, uh, so using a nice round number of 10%, um, that, that gives you 4,752 watts per day. Uh, and that's over a twenty, so over twenty-four hours running, fifty percent of the time for a fifty percent duty cycle. Considering this AC two hundred and forty has a fifteen hundred and thirty-six watt-hour battery, that would probably carry you through about eight hours. That may be less than ideal, um, but that may be plenty to get you through a power outage as well. During our trials, we saw that we never saw the fridge pull more than about a hundred watts, and it did drop down from there. So. We were not using the ice maker, we were not using the auto defrost, etc. So you could turn those things off. If you don't have those things on or if your fridge is not equipped with them, you may be on the lower end of the spectrum like what we saw at 100 watts. In that case, at 100 watts uh, per hour as it's running, a 50%, even, even at 100 watts, it dropped below that, but even at 100 watts, a 50% duty cycle and 10% inverter inefficiency, this fridge would consume a much more modest 1,320 hours. Uh, 1,320 watts in 24 hours, and the AC240 should handle that, even if, if the battery is fully charged when you start, even though the battery will be mostly depleted by the time you're done. Uh, a practical application, it was not that hot the day we were testing this, um, because it was springtime in Wyoming, and it was less than 100, so we might have got more than 24 hours out of it. I think we would have. Uh, we weren't there full-time at that property to be able to run it indefinitely to see when it ran out. But we were able to get the measurements and know that it was running and no problem and to do the math from there. All right, so how to make it work. If you need to be able to power a fridge on a portable power station, there are some strategies that I think can help make it work, to make it practical so it's actually achievable. Uh, first up, purchase as much battery power with your portable power station as you can afford. The AC240 allows you to connect extension batteries uh, to massively increase the overall battery power. Great thing is you can add them on as later. So if you if you get the power station now you can add on a battery later and really expand it. Of course you can buy a larger unit, they're heavier, they're harder to move still. You can buy a smaller unit and still sometimes still add batteries. 
but his Asus 240 is kind of a great middle spot if you're trying to run a cabin, uh, RV, a boat, or uh, you know, even kind of backup power for your house. I think it's a good sweet spot in the middle. So I purchase as much battery power as you can afford. Another option here would be to purchase a good quality 12 volt compressor fridge as a backup in conjunction with a portable power station. That does mean you might lose some food that's in your big fridge that won't fit in the smaller fridge if things are out for a while, but you might be able to run that 12 volt fridge for several days on a portable power station because it's much more efficient, doesn't require near as much power. Uh, the one we have, we have two, we have a truck fridge uh, front opening and we all, that's a 65 quart. We also have a 60 quart uh, set power fridge that's a top opening in the van. That's a combination of fridge freezer one. Um, they do not use a lot of power, so they a lot less than a big fridge. So if you are somebody who has a small fridge anyway, or if you don't keep your fridge very full, or if you just want to make sure you can, can uh, preserve some most important things, possibly medications or something like that, or certain foods you just have to preserve, then that might be an option. It would use a lot less power. But otherwise, uh, you know, you definitely can run a big fridge, depending on battery power, on a portable power station. Uh, third suggestion, plan ahead for longer outages. And there's a few things you can do here to plan ahead. One is turn down the fridge and freezer temperature to conserve energy. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to take a little less power uh, to, to keep things cold uh, if you're keeping it at like 40 and 24 or something, or 40 and 28 in the freezer. 40 in the fridge, 28 in the fr freezer. Something like that. It's going to take less power than trying to keep it like 32 and 0. Open the fridge doors as infrequently as possible. Um, you know, some people already do this because they're trying to conserve energy anyway, but open the, you know, just be aware that every time you open the fridge doors, the compressor is going to come back on. You're going to burn up some more electricity. And depending on your ambient temperature, maybe even consider turning the power off overnight, especially if your power is out in the winter. It's kind of cold. You're going to be bundled up bed under a bunch of blankets. So it's going to be like maybe it's 40, maybe even 30 in the house. Turn the fridge off and just let, turn off the power station. Just let it be. And then you won't use any power overnight. If it's, if it's cool, uh, that may be a valid option. Um, and then consider options to recharge the power station. Because even with this 240, if you can recharge it, you're going to get a whole lot more time. And it should easily carry you through overnight uh, in, in most circumstances. Unless it's like, you know, it's like really, really hot. And your, or your fridge is very inefficient or something. This will depend where you live, though. What your options are for being able to recharge one option, a portable uh, solar panel array. If you're somewhere where you can deploy that outside and get enough sunlight, uh, run the cable in to your power station, you can be recharging. And this AC240 takes a tremendous amount of uh, solar, so pretty much all the panels you'd want to put out there, you're going to be able to charge into this thing and, and keep it charged up. Another option could be a portable gas or propane generator to recharge the power station once or twice a day to keep it topped up. If you're going to go this route, and if you're in a place where you can't even do this, be sure to position at a safe distance from your home because those uh, the carbon monoxide and other uh, hydrocarbons can come into your home and cause grave harm. Uh, and definitely, definitely, definitely have a carbon monoxide detector in your home, maybe even two of them if you want to be safe, if you're going to be running a portable generator outside of your home. Because every time you, you hear about a large-scale power outage anywhere, people die because they have a portable generator running and the carbon monoxide gets into the home. So be extra careful with that if you're going to do it, but it is a possibility. All right, let's wrap this up. It is possible to run a household fridge on a portable power station, at least for a short period of time. It may even be practical if you have an energy efficient fridge, a larger power station battery, and a way to recharge the power station to keep it your fridge going during a longer power outage. So I hope you found this information helpful. We do have a link to the Blue Eddy AC240 in the video description below if you'd like to check it out. We've been testing it. We've been using it a lot. It's fantastic so far. We have nothing but good things to say about it. And we're going to be building a cabinet in here in the RV to run the whole RV off it very soon. Uh, I've just been busy with a lot of projects and haven't had a chance to get to that yet. But meanwhile, uh, we have a link if you want to check it out. And thanks for joining us, everyone, in this video. We'll catch you soon in the next video.